protein is complex because we have 20 amino acids that we have all the time. And for protein, we don't actually need protein. We need the nine essential amino acids that are in it. And particularly lysine, methionine, tryptophan, and leucine are always limiting in plant-based proteins. As you look at plants, certain kinds of plants are more limiting in individual amino acids. So grains in general, wheat and oat, corn are all very limiting in lysine. Uh, legumes like soy and pea are limiting in methionine, the sulfur amino acids. And if you think about protein, protein is consumed in meals. Uh, if you look at mTOR signaling, and the issue uh, with protein is we need to eat it in pulses. We want mTOR to trigger, and then we want it to go into an idle phase. Uh, the worst thing you can do is graze all day long and keep mTOR active all day long. mTOR has lots of different roles in every different tissue, but in muscle it has a very unique role in terms of, especially in adults, in terms of how we maintain our muscle mass. And it's critical to understand how to, how to keep that balance correctly. What's interesting in amino acids, though, is while the meal is digested and absorbed, amino acids will pool in the blood and in the free pools for up to like five hours. And so after a meal, you'll have elevated blood levels for a fairly extensive period of time. What's interesting within that is that muscle protein synthesis will only last about two to two and a half hours. So while your meal is still being absorbed, um, and you still have high blood levels, you're actually not getting a lot of benefit to it. One of the things I like to talk about is that there's a range of meal response. And depending on the exact protein you're using, that's probably somewhere between 25 with a really high absorbing protein like whey, up to maybe 55 grams of protein. Beyond that, you're probably not getting much of a muscle effect. And the two meals that are most critical are your first meal after an overnight fast and probably your last meal, a dinner meal, because they're farthest apart. No one, to my knowledge, has ever shown a leucine response to a lunch meal. So for me personally, I want that first meal to be in the upper part of that range. So I'm having 45, 50 grams of protein, not quite a pound and a half of meat, but I'm having a fairly high protein meal. First and foremost, if you're gonna build muscle, you have to have the resistance training. So you have to have the, the dynamic need to increase your mild fibers content. You know, you have to think about these leucine thresholds. You have to stimulate mTOR. We know that muscle protein synthesis is always running, maybe 35, 40%. But what leucine does is trigger the extra capacity. It triggers certain mRNAs to express, and it's the ones that actually increase your capacity to build myofibrillar proteins. So it's targeting certain mRNAs. Uh, so it's not like you're going from zero to something. You're going from 40% to 100% max is what's, what's happening. And that can be sustained for about two and a half hours. And what's interesting about that is the mTOR signal is still probably active five hours later, but protein synthesis has pretty much shut back down after two and a half hours. It's not about an even distribution at all. It's about how many meals per day do you want to hit these leucine thresholds. And and I like to have a high level in my first meal, and I kind of like having a meal that's a little lower. I like it being variable, but I'm getting at least two meals per day that are greatly exceeding that leucine threshold. Most adults, I would like to see it in the 1.2 to 1.6 for endurance athletes. Uh, sort of in that more 1.6 kind of range and strength athletes. 1.6 to 2.2, I think those are totally normal ranges for, for those kinds of individuals. Yeah.